Well, first of all, we want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, I wish we were able to meet like this in better times. But uh, as many of you have heard the information, the announcement of the Boeing Company and its decision to leave the city of Wichita and the state of Kansas, uh, we find that it being very disturbing to us as a community and as elected officials. Uh, a lot of discussion has happened over uh, what caused this, and uh, from that standpoint, uh, there are no real answers with the exception of the ones that we have received from the Boeing Company. We were not given an opportunity to be able to compete for this company, to be able to get them to stay here. Uh, everything happened very quickly, and from that stance today, the news that you are receiving, uh, we received it the exact same time as the employees. We're very disappointed, but in the same breath, we start looking at where do we go from today. And today, as we look at, at what's happening, is we have families, we have employees that must be taken care of. And so from our position, we're going to be working, and we're going to be working extremely hard to be able to go out and aggressively bring businesses here to the city of Wichita to offset this loss of this company and so that when those individuals and the company has made a decision that they're going to leave by the end of 2013, we don't know if that's the actual date. But what we're going to do is try to make sure that when those individuals do uh, leave the city of Wichita, that we have some employment for those employees and their families here in the community and in the city of Wichita. Yes, the days of the, today is a very dark day, and it's very, but we're optimistic that we're going to get past this. We've had some challenges in the past and over the years, and we've been able to overcome it. Now, nothing quite as difficult as one of our aviation companies leaving. But I want to assure the citizens that we are going to get through this. Our goals are to work aggressively, as I said, in going out and bringing new businesses here to the city of Wichita. We're going to leave no stone unturned, and we're asking Greater Wichita Economic Development, all of our partners in the various different cities, REAP, regional economic partners there, to go out and to try to find businesses that are interested in coming to the city of Wichita and giving us that opportunity to be able to provide them the opportunity to get that world-class uh, quality of workers and individuals that have that possess that work skill that only we can provide that any place in the United States. So we're going to go out and we're going to be doing that, but we're also going to be trying to see what we can do to diversify what we actually have. And we've been working with our partners, GWEDC, REAP, and other council members in trying to work on diversifying what we actually have. We do have several reasons to be optimistic, and we believe that 2012 we're starting to see a lot of things that are turning around for the city of Wichita and our aviation industry. We have the potential to absorb many of these jobs that are actually coming up. Our general aviation is on the rebound, and more commercial aviation is expected to be announced later on this year. One of the examples is the recent announcement of the Learjet 85 production, plus the Engineering Excellence Center. We also have potential for more commercial aviation work at existing manufacturers, including Southwest Airlines' order for the 737 jets. Don't think for one second that we are not exploring our opportunities to go out and recruit Airbus to come to the city of Wichita. We are making those efforts, and we are making those phone calls to do whatever is necessary. This here is about loyalty. And I think that we as a community demonstrated our loyalty to the Boeing Company when they asked us to stand behind them and to go fight for them to bring the tanker here to the city of Wichita. The decision that they made, they tell us, is strictly business. Us going out and recruiting other businesses and their competitors is strictly business. But it's our loyalty to the citizens here in the city of Wichita. But we want everyone to clearly understand that as long as Boeing is still in our community, until the day that that sign comes down off that building, we will continue to ask, as policymakers, 
as leaders, and as a community. What can we do to keep you here in the city of Wichita? And we will continue to do that and searching for those opportunities. We've had some discussion. We listened to the interviews that many of you had with them today. And many of them said that there were no incentives that were involved, but they made it very clear that there are incentives there for them to be able to receive. So with that being said, I will be followed by our county commissioner and also by uh, our state representative and also by our representative of the chamber. Commissioner Unruh. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We too are saddened by the news that uh, we've received today. Actually, we're not just saddened, we are angered and we're disappointed and we're dismayed about the circumstances that came to the announcement that Boeing's leaving our community. For more than 80 years, the lights have continued to burn on South Oliver at the Boeing Company while our aviation workers have built airplanes for military and commercial use for uh, facilities all around the world. And probably every one of us knows at least one family who's at work at Boeing or who has worked out there. There are, are family members, there are neighbors, there are acquaintances who now have a very uncertain future. And for some families, Boeing has provided career opportunities for multiple generations. And we will always be proud of the great work that these workers have done out at the Boeing Company as they support our nation's defense efforts and in building rapidly changing aircraft that have helped make business and leisure travel around the world what it is today. Now we have, we have seen and we understand the cyclical nature of the aviation industries. All of us have gone through times where there have been layoffs and there have been recalls. But unfortunately, the economic downturn has impacted the local, avi local aviation companies more than any other industry. And I don't think we can compare this to anything that's happened in recent years. And today, we feel the pain even more deeply. And we are not going to build our future with Boeing in our community any longer. But we've known for some time that other cities and states and countries have been env envious of our relationship with our aviation partners, including Cessna, um, Bombardier Learjet, Hawker Beechcraft, Spirit, and, and many, many, many suppliers that make Wichita and South Central Kansas home. And those other cities and uh, countries and townships and states uh, have worked hard every day to lure these companies away and to violate the relationships we have. And today, it's become a reality. So this is a very difficult reminder to us about how competitive and yet fragile the economic development climate is. And we must continue to be creative, innovative, and aggressive in our efforts to retain and recruit jobs to our area. And this is not a day that we're going to set back in defeat. I'm not setting back in defeat. I don't think any of my other citizens in the community are going to set back either. It's a day to recognize that we are still a strong community, that our other aviation companies are rebounding, that we have a skilled aviation workers with years of experience, and that we hope will absorb that experience and that production in local businesses. I am hopeful and I'm depending upon that Boeing's prediction that a significant amount of work to our suppliers will in fact come true and that these companies will grow and prosper here in Sedgwick County and in South Central Kansas. But our work's cut out for us, along with the city of Wichita and the surrounding government entities and our business party in the community and region, we must be diligent with our economic development strategies, stay focused, be intentional in our effort every single day to attract businesses and jobs to our community. We can do this, and together we will do it. In the meantime, our hearts go out to those families who are going to be displaced now because of this decision by Boeing. So at this time, I'd like to turn the podium over to Representative Jim Warp.
Good afternoon. My name is Jim Ward. I am the Sedgwick County Delegation Chair to the State Legislature. This is a very sad day for Wichita, for Sedgwick County, and for Kansas. But it is a heartbreaking day for the 2,100 high-skilled, well-trained employees who lost their job this morning. It is an outrage that we will not be getting the 2,500 jobs promised to us by Boeing when they got the tanker contract. But make no mistake about it, Wichita will survive, Sedgwick County will survive, Kansas will survive. Make no mistake about it, we are open for business. We have a world-class, well-trained, highly skilled workforce that does a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. We build the best airplanes in the world. We build the best airplane parts in the world right here in Sedgwick County, Kansas. We repair and modify and maintain airplanes better than anyone else. And we are at the cutting edge of technological advantage in aviation through our um, aviation center at Wichita State University. Make no mistake, Wichita, Sedgwick County, Kansas is open for business to sell airplanes. And those people who want the best airplanes built anywhere will come here to do work. It is very disappointing that a partner that has worked, we have worked so closely with for so many years, both city, county, and state, providing tax incentives, tax benefits, the economic development tools, all with one goal in mind. When Boeing came to us in the legislature and said, we need your help, I've heard from the let's say, delegation in Washington, we need your help. When the Boeing company came to three governors, Democrats and Republicans, and said, we need your help to get this tanker contract because it is the future of Boeing military in Wichita and you'll get 7,500 jobs, we were there. We pulled the load. We did more than our fair share. So it's an outrage that we stand here today um, with our hearts broken, but our, our will to continue strong. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Gary Plummer, and I'm the president of the Wichita Metro Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank the mayor for including us in this uh, event this afternoon. I just want to say that the chamber is very disappointed with today's news from Boeing. Certainly our hearts go out to the 2,100 families that are impacted by this decision. Boeing has been a strong corporate citizen for more than 80 years in Wichita. They've been a value chamber member, and their presence will certainly be missed in this uh, market area. Boeing is a strong partner with other aviation companies like Spirit and a, a wide variety of supply chain businesses. And as Chairman Unruh alluded to, I think it's very critical that we continue to work and do what we can to support Boeing's efforts and that supply chain to keep that work that uh, Boeing is uh, doing in Kansas here in the Wichita area. You know, the Chamber will continue to support and grow our aviation industry. And like the mayor, we're optimistic with a lot of things that are going on right now with other major employers in that industry here in our community. And on behalf of Susie Allstrand and the folks at the Greater Wichita Economic Development Coalition, I want to assure you that we will work very closely with local and state government to do what we can do to keep that industry strong in the Wichita area. As Representative Ward uh, very eloquently said, uh, Wichita is the aviation capital of the world, and our aviation workforce is second to none. And that has not changed, and we will move forward. Thank you. So you've had a chance to, uh, to listen to our views. And I'm sure that you can tell by our comments and by our expression that it has uh, taken a lot of work for us to control our emotions and our outrage. So don't ask me when I give you the opportunity to do question and answer, are you outraged? Because the answer will be yes, with probably another four-letter word attached to it. The thing is, is that we have a strong community. And as you can see, we have pulled together, and we're going to get past this. And we're going to take care of those families that are out there that have this questionable as to what their future will be by the end of 2013. 
But I do want to take this opportunity to recognize some people that are here that have joined us uh, today, and we do appreciate them joining us. Um, my colleagues, the Vice Mayor, Levanta Williams, please raise your hand. Council Member Jeff Longwell, Janet Miller, Pete Meitzner, James Clendenin, Michael O'Donnell, and our city manager, Robert Layton. We have county commissioners that have joined us. We have Carl Peter John and Richard Ranzall. From Senator Moran's office, and we have uh, Mike Zamorella, and we have the Kansas Department of Commerce, we have Sue Slap. We want to thank you for joining us today. And uh, at this point in time, I ask that uh, the four individuals, the three individuals, please join me. And we're going to open it for uh, question and answers. Mayor Brewer, I'm curious. Uh, one of the things that Mark Vasco Boyd said today was business costs are not competitive in the military maintenance market, and there are limited prospects in New York. How do you react to that? That, from the information that we have received, uh, that we've received, uh, we've had mixed signals. Uh, my conversation earlier today and yesterday, those questions were asked, and uh, was there a problem, and was our labor cost too high? And the answer was no. So when you were asking the question and we were listening to it and watching you do your interviews and what, uh, what the gentleman said there, didn't coincide with the information that the earlier uh, Boeing representative actually told us. So, so from that standpoint, we don't know. We have asked those questions. Uh, we have not been privileged to being able to see that study that they actually had conducted supposedly in the past 30 days. So uh, all of that was new to us. Mayor, you and Commissioner Unruh got together on December 19th with a similar press conference trying to open up communication with Boeing. Did that occur since that press conference, or what kind of communication have you had with Boeing throughout this process? The answer to your question is, the answer is no. The only thing that they've identified to, to me was the fact that they were doing the study. Commissioner Unruh? That, that's the same response I would give. We have had uh, some just brief conversation to ask questions. I have made a call, but the response was it's under study and we can't make a further comment. Does that add to your frustration? That adds to my frustration. I mean, it's, we have always felt like we were community partners with the Boeing Company. And as um, Representative Ward said, we worked uh, very hard with them to make sure that this tanker contract was secured on behalf of Boeing. And it was just seven months ago that we celebrated with them down on their property with the entire congressional delegation. So to come up to this point and not have communication and have this sort of uh, a decision made, it is um, frustrating. Mary, it's been said today several times that um, some of the Kansas delegation is looking into that contract that Boeing made with the Department of Defense. You know, do you have people looking at that as well to see if they are going to be able to Anytime somebody promises us 7,500 jobs and then today they're not going to give them to us, you can be assured we're looking into the contract to see how that's affecting us and whether we can hold them accountable for it. Do you think they violated? Well, at this point in time, we don't know. We do know that the trust where you heard it from them, we promise you 7,500 jobs. The only thing that, that, uh, that I would be questioning is to whether or not I question their integrity. That's plain and simple. What's the city and county uh, prepared to offer, if anything? Well, first of all, we'd have to find out exactly what it is that that they would need, and what is wanting, and what they're wanting, and also identify what is the problem, and then from that standpoint, we'd figure out how we could fix that for them. But we have to know first, you know, what's broken to be able to fix it. But we'll do. City and county will do whatever is necessary for the citizens of Wichita. I also like to take a crack at that one. I've got a list of two pages of incentives that the state of Kansas, totaling millions of dollars, have provided to Boeing each time with Boeing representatives in the room saying this will protect and promote job growth. 
not in Washington State or China or Mexico, but here in Wichita, Kansas. So at this point in time, really the question I think the mayor is absolutely right is, to our dance partner, Boeing, at what point in time do you have to stand up? Where's your dignity? Where's your credibility? Where's your honesty in dealing with people across the table? And, and what can we do to help you fix what you've done today? Yeah, Airbus has been mentioned. Um, Mike Pompeo mentioned it also today. Can you talk a little bit about how those conversations are going? And does that look pretty positive for what you're talking Well, I would say that those conversations and, and us telling them the door is open and we're interested in doing work with you uh, is very premature. And uh, in being able to say something of that nature. I do know that uh, that a lot of us put a lot of support behind the Boeing company to get this contract from Airbus. And you know, our philosophy was that whatever had belonged to our military needed to be built in the United States. But in the same breath, Airbus does have a company here inside the United States and there's no reason with what we have, the skilled labor that we have, the technology that we have, and the quality of work that we can provide and the manpower that it still can't be manufactured here inside the city of Wichita, inside the state of Kansas. So those opportunities are still there. Hey, you talked about it a little bit, but obviously some folks might hear this news today, get discouraged about their own jobs, a little worried about things. What's your message to those folks as they move forward? Well, I, can, I think I can understand, and I think each and every one of us in here can clearly uh, sympathize with them and, and, uh, and understand that, yes, they should be concerned. But this is something that we shouldn't be surprised at, actually. I mean, we've known for some time that we've had an aviation industry uh, here in the state of Kansas, and we had something that everybody in the United States, everybody in the world is wanting either all of it or a piece of it. So coming out and being able to, to secure this, it doesn't surprise us in any way. It's disappointing to us because we thought we had a marriage. So I would tell those individuals that we're going to work through this and that we are paying close attention. And as I said, we're sending our partners, our economic development partners out to work aggressively, very aggressively. Do not leave any rock unturned and let's find some businesses to replace those that are leaving of the same quality of the Boeing Company. Is there still a sense of confidence in being able to retain them here or are you guys pretty much saying That there, uh, from my standpoint, you know, I know that we can perform any type of work that's actually that's actually out there uh, that anyone may be providing us. And as far as the decision that the Boeing Company is making, we're pretty sure that their that their minds are made. And I, I'm of the opinion because I don't know what these guys think. I'm of the opinion that decision was made long before we ever made it to this point. Because of what happened, if another company would want to come here, aerospace company, does what happened with Boeing change the way you might go about being a little more cautious or having the back of your mind are they going to pull a quote unquote on Boeing on us or anything? Well, that's always going to be at the forefront of our minds. I mean, this is, this is something that's historic in the state of Kansas. Boeing has been here for 80 years. At, this is something like losing a family member, a family member walking away from the family, or your wife walking away from you, or your husband. You know, this is something that's really important to us, and uh, we'll always be very cautious as to what's going on, and you can be assured that we will ask those questions. But we're going to also be looking for those additional opportunities for us to see if there are other businesses that want to move here, that we can do the same thing to somebody else that they've done to us. Well, is it too early to talk about Spirit? I mean, they clearly came into the picture once Boeing got rid of the commercial side of the team and absorbed many of those jobs that were lost from Boeing. Are they going to be an integral part of maybe what's next for that land and for those jobs? That there, uh, as far as my conversation with the Spirit Company, uh, has not been determined. They have not identified that they would need that type of space. Uh, one, a lot of that space is hangar space and they need manufacturing space. So that's the only thing that I can tell you about the Spirit Company uh, as to the future of them and what their plans are. The only thing we can say is uh, Spirit has been a very good partner for the city of Wichita and the Cedric County state of Kansas. And, uh, and they've done a lot of things. Even during the recession, 
instead of having workforce reductions, they went to three-day work weeks and the employees there really partnered and really helped out to help us get through these difficult times. So they've definitely identified and clearly demonstrated that they are a good partner for us. Gary, I have a question for you. Um, losing 2,100 jobs, what is it going to mean to the economy? And, you know, I know that there's already some people looking at that. Have you taken a look at that yet, or do you have any idea? I haven't uh, received any information to quantify that. It, it could be that someone has done that and not shared it with the chamber yet. Uh, certainly it's going to have an impact. Uh, but as was mentioned earlier, I think uh, first by the mayor, there are some very positive signs in the air in the aviation industry in our area right now, and uh, so positive that uh, you know we might be able to overcome a loss of 2,100 jobs in in a mid-range uh, period of time, like a few years. So uh, I know that doesn't give an immediate answer to 2,100 families who got the news today, but I think it does give us, give us some uh, cause for hope. I think also that it, it gives us the reason to work even closer with our local government and state government partners to make sure that we have the kind of business climate and the kind of uh, competitive environment that we can be a, a bit more effective in uh, retaining and preventing uh, other states and, and countries from luring away companies like Boeing. And if we, I think the message to uh, the chamber is we have to work even harder to maintain what we have here. And, and as I said, we, we're the, still the aviation capital of the world. Uh, we just have to work harder to maintain that and realize that we can't rest on our laurels. Jim, or anybody up there, I guess, does anybody know what the incentives are we're going to move to Washington, Oklahoma, Texas? Well, what we've actually heard, and the only way we heard it is because you guys asked a question at 1230 during your interview with them, and uh, they were saying that there were no incentives, or they had not accepted any incentives, but they knew that there were incentives that were there. So you have to figure it out from there. We have the exact same thing you have. Did, local, did you guys locally give From, from the city of Wichita and Sedgwick County, the incentives are mainly con confined to industrial revenue bonds and the property tax abatement that that uh, entails. Uh, however, our information is, or I, I believe I got it from the um, city of Wichita's economic development, that they haven't asked for uh, internal revenue bonds since 2007, I believe. So I don't know if that could have been uh, an indication to us what their future plans were, but it's been some time since they've applied for those. I was just going to add in, I have a list rather than try to go off the cuff of things that the state has done to benefit Boeing. But here's the key thing, which is the most frustrating and disappointing after an 80 year partnership. What you're hearing from all three levels of government is they didn't come to us and say, here's the piece that's holding us up. Here's the thing that's going to make us backtrack on our promises to you. They just, the only thing they didn't do was load the vans up at the middle of the night and run out of town. They at least stood up in the broad daylight and said that. There was not a situation where we said we weren't willing to talk to you about what it would take. They just weren't willing to talk to us. So what I was going to say, the legislature starts on Monday. Is there anything that can be done in those 90 days to look at this issue and do more? Yeah. There's an old saying. Um, I can't want it more than you do, okay? We are here to say we want it. And we've been saying that for 80 years and we've got hundreds of millions of dollars of incentives that we put on the table over the years to do that. We can't want it more than Boeing does. And they haven't come to us, as far as I know, and said this is the piece that's causing us problems. This is what we need to make this work with you, our partner, for 80 years. And so it's hard to negotiate by yourself or against yourself. Let's take one more question. That's even better. <laughs> yeah. That is, you answered it. Well, let's end it on a positive note, though, since we're going to get executed. I mean, there is some good things ahead for us, even if we're not making that announcement today. Can you at least elaborate on that for us? There are some good things. And as you heard me t talk about the things that were going on in Learjet, and then there's some other things that are out there uh, that, that we are working on, GWEDC is working on and the Chamber's working on that, uh, that hopefully we can make these announcements in the near future. 
So we see that, that we are turning the corner and we are paying attention to what our aviation companies are doing and we're doing everything that we possibly can. I think on that note, I think one of the positive things is, is, is that, uh, well, we first have to look at it and recognize the fact that, you know, I want you to know that we are as equally frustrated as policymakers as you are as the citizens. And, uh, and we do apologize for this happening today. But you know, we have to put this behind us, and we ha must move forward, pull together as a community, recognize the challenges that we have ahead of us, and each and every one of us have to address these issues and take it on head on, but collectively as a group. And I think that that's the message that we're saying. We can overcome this. Uh, no matter what decision the Boeing Company has made, just keeping in mind, we still have some great partners that are out there. We still have a great workforce. We still have a great community. And we will get past this.